Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM this week reported dismal interim results and warned of much worse to come for the full year. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss some of the key takeaways from the utilities results presentation. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. The figures seem to have confirmed the worst with regard to ESCOM's financial health. That's right. Um, during the first half of the year is when ESCOM makes its money. Uh, the tariffs are higher during winter, they also have higher volumes than they do in summer when they enter the maintenance period. And even during this period, uh, they've only made, or just scraped through with about a 650 million rand profit. Um, uh, and that's a lot lower than last year. And they're warning for the full year, given all the extra costs that are coming into the system now with uh, uh, planned maintenance, as well as having to run diesel a lot more intensively and utilize other instruments to keep the lights on during the period. They're talking about a possible 15 billion rand loss for the full year. So that's a, that's a really dire situation. But if you look at the, ra the financial ratios, just across the board, it's just they use the different color coding and it's basically red for down. And uh, the big issue here is that their debt burden has increased massively and the, the, the ability to cover that just the interest on that um, is becoming very, very difficult. I think over the period they had something like a debt servicing uh, cash outflow of about 45 billion. That's up from around 22 billion in the previous year. Now that is distorted by the 20 billion bridging loan that they received from the banks when they hit the liquidity crunch due to their co governance concerns towards the end of 2017. So it is somewhat distorted, but that's not what they're getting in in terms of cash. It's, uh, they're getting only about, they're getting more than half of that, but it's quite short of what they, they're getting in in terms of cash and they're paying out a lot. So they're having actually to raise debt or use debt, not only to pay for capital expenditure, but to service its debt. So it's a dire situation. The utility also announced the outline for a turnaround plan. Yes, it is an outline. We haven't got uh, the details, a skeletal plan, but basically it's built on a couple of pillars. One is cost containment, which I think uh, South Africans would applaud. The second is to try and enhance revenue, which is going to be difficult. We've seen uh, sales falling again during this first half by nearly a percent. And, uh, and the third one is to deal with this massive debt burden, and that's a big focus, and that's the difficult one for South Africans to stomach. The debt burden um, uh, has already risen to around the 400 billion rand mark. Uh, I mentioned how much that's, gonna, that's costing them already in terms of just servicing the interest on that. They have to pay eventually the capital on that. And uh, the, the current tariffs are not sufficient for them to do that. And uh, their, their whole uh, balance sheet structure is fragile. So. We are looking at them driving back up the Ben Skuman Highway to National Treasury, I think, in the coming weeks to ask for either a bailout in the form of an equity injection or some sort of what they call debt relief. What, that will, what form that will take, I think it's too early to, to state, but it will have implications for the government, the fiscal balance sheet. So we're, in a, we're back to the future in many ways. We're in a, probably in a worse position than we have been in, in many years. The one thing is that everything is laid bare. I think, I think that the leadership um, have made it clear that they, they've been tackling the corruption. The milk is spilt. Uh, we can't you know, do much about that, but we now need to look forward about the sustainability of the enterprise, while in the background they continue with the criminal prosecutions and uh, the, the sort of fight back against corruption. But we really need to focus on uh, the attention as South Africans as well as ESCOM uh, on their sustainability because it's become a really precarious situation. From what you've heard, what are the prospects of salvaging ESCOM? It's really unclear. I think the business model that they outlined in skeletal form at the moment doesn't really fundamentally align with the energy transition that's happening around the world. So we've seen uh, what's happening in the rest of the world where you do have a vertical separation between generation transmission and distribution, all they're really talking about here is ring fencing those various units within Eskom, not really separating them out. Um, whether they have been able to align their business to the, the steep falls in renewable energy prices, there's no real talk about um, you know investing in renewable energy, but there's no real talk really about any new investment because of the situation they are in. 
So that would probably be a bit of an unfair uh, analysis to add to it. But really, we'd have to see the detail uh, of this turnaround plan and how really realistically it's aligned to not just um, not just to those big trends that I spoke about, but also the decentralization that's going to happen and is happening in the electricity system. We're really seeing companies and shopping centers and manufacturers and mines investing in their own generation that's cheaper. Getting at, It's either at parity or there's more certainty over the price path of your own generation than it is of the Eskom tariff. And therefore, it means that there's either partial or whole grid defection. Is the strategy alive to that? I can't, I think it's premature to say, but at this stage, it looks very much like uh, bandages or Band-Aid being put onto really deep wounds. And uh, I'm not sure that uh, the Eskom's really done enough with this turnaround plan to get itself out of this death spiral. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.